guys, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Paint the Town Dead, and I am one half of your host, Caitlin. I am 0. 0.5 Excuse of the host. Excuse you. Excuse you. I'm 0. 0.5. Mandrew. Mandrew? Andrew. Oh, also Mandrew. And Andrew. I am a man. You are a man. Andrew means man. Does it really? I think I looked it up and it was like manly or something. I think that sounds like you're making that up. Let's Google it. Let's go. My name means pure one. Nobody knows what your name means because it can be spelled 30 different ways. Mine is the proper way to spell it. It is the traditional Irish way. Uh, it's derived from the ancient Greek um, a- Andros as oh, in okay. man. Yeah, Andros, yeah. Thus meaning manly and as a consequence, brave, strong, courageous, and warrior. Uh. Most of these things don't describe me. <laughs> Except the fact that you are indeed a man. I am a man and I look like a man. Both of those are true. Just look at me. If you were to imagine a man, just as like, who's who's just a man? A dude, it's you. If I were to think of a generic white man who has a shaved head and beard, yep, that's it. It's you. That's You're the there. generic white man. You're there. I saw him. Um, my name means pure one. It's, I saw a funny thing the other day. Also hilarious. Shut up. Somebody posted, it was like, introduce yourself as the meaning of your name. And I was like, hello, I'm the pure one. I'm manly. <laughs> I am a man. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, you been, you been okay? You been good? Sure. Yeah, that's where I'm as, at. As okay as always. Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know. I think Whatever actually- Whatever that means. I think it's been a little worse, honestly, than usual for me, but that's okay. It, oh, yeah. I had a good weekend. I had a good birthday. That's good. Then why would it be worse? Well, last week really effing sucked big time. It sucked oh. big, big, big time. As, as long as it wasn't like you were crying at your birthday, and you're like, I no. can do this. It's my birthday. You know? That's how last year was. Yeah. When, when I, it was the most depressing, saddest birthday in the world. No, but this was a good birthday. We went out to dinner with a couple friends. Uh, all of us are vaccinated, and that was really exciting. That is exciting. Um, so everybody at the table was vaccinated. And uh, anyway, it was a really good meal, and we had a really good time. And got, I got the best dang birthday cake ever. It's from Nothing Bunt Cakes. Have you been? It's in Little Rock. Have you been there? Nope. They when you hear Bunt Cake, you're like, mm, cool, a Bunt Cake, delicious. Because all the Bunt Cakes I've had prior to this have been like dry and just not very flavorful or good. My mom makes good ones. Well, you should try these. These are amazing. She, I don't know if it count as a. I guess what what would you call a Bunt Cake? Just like that specific shape. Um, or is there more to it? I'm not really sure. I don't know if there's like a specific type recipe. I know like my mom would make a pound cake in a bundt cake pan. Okay. I was just wondering because my mom, one of my favorite cakes is my mom would make this like cinnamon sugar cake Ooh. in a bundt cake formation. That sounds good. Is, it like the, is it like the monkey bread, the pull apart stuff? No, nah, oh, I don't okay. think so. Okay. But it's, it's really good. I need to make her oh, make that for me so sometime. Mom, the mom. meatloaf. <laughs> uh, Give me some cake. Give me the bundt cake. Come on. It's actually been a long time since I've had that. So well, maybe, maybe, I should, maybe I should be like, hey, come on. <laughs> do the thing. Hey, mom. You maybe I'll that? get my dad to do it because my dad's been obsessed with baking lately. Yeah, I do that. Because he, when, he, when he had mm-hmm. cancer, he couldn't taste anything. And so I always joke that he it was like how um, people will listen to sad songs when they're sad to make <laughs> themselves more sad. You watch cooking he, shows when you... Yeah. yeah. So he, he couldn't taste anything because he had throat cancer. And yeah. So it was radiation yeah, in his mouth. Yeah. And couldn't taste anything. And so he'd watch cooking shows all the time. He bought like a book on baking and everything. Sounds so. about right. Yeah. So maybe I'll try and see if he'll yeah, make see it. see if he'll do it. See how it turns out. Has something. he been, has he been a good baker? Uh, yeah. He's mostly just made bread, like sourdough bread and stuff. That sounds good. Yeah. And it has been good. Uh, no, but there's nothing but cake, nothing but cakes, which is a cute name, but they're so amazing. And I, he got me my favorite flavor, the Funfetti flavor. Yeah. It has this icing on it that's amazing and it's it was great. It was a good birthday. It was a good weekend. Terrible, terrible week last week. I was ready to just just crawl into bed and just not go anywhere or do anything. It was so bad. But last weekend or this past weekend's been good. Yeah. Um I watched a bunch of basketball because oh, that's yeah, happening. It's happening right now. I don't know. It it's cool. been interesting and weird because the the seedings for the tournament have all been weird because yeah. The season's been weird because yeah. of COVID and all that. So it's like the Big Ten is going to have all the best teams 
and they're all losing left and right. And it's like, the Pac-12 is terrible. Look at their champion. They went 10-10. and 10. Awful. The Pac-12 has not lost a game as of this recording in the tournament. They're like 7-0. and 0. I think the things you're funny. saying mean stuff. They mean something to somebody else out there, not yes, to you. Not to me. So yeah. uh, you seem excited, so I'm happy for it's you. It's just weird. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Um, but why don't we talk about what we're going to talk about today? The thing I'm going to talk about. Sorry, I just took a big old swig of chocolate milk. Yes, that sounds great. I think that's a great idea. Good job, me. Good job. That's why I'm the better half. Are you? I just said it. Okay. You You can have this one. It's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it regardless. It's a consolation prize. It's gold medal, baby. If you say so. So. Um, what are we talking about this week? We're talking about a guy named Wayne Eugene Dumont. Uh, this is quite the story. Quite was, he, the tale. was he on our list? He's been on the list for a, a little while, yeah. Wayne Eugene, I don't remember that name. He's right beside another person. There's going to be a theme to this. I'll, you'll you'll see it as we as it develops. Let's party. So this here Dumont fellow, Wayne Eugene Dumont. He is born September 10th, 1949. Ooh. He he grows up up in uh, Dewitt, Arkansas. That's a place. Sure is. He fought in that there Vietnam War. He was a veteran okay. of the Vietnam War. Um, and it, he worked basically as like a handyman, carpenter. Uh, he'd work in Texas some, um, but mostly in eastern Arkansas, like DeWitt, Forest City, that sort of deal. Southern Arkansas, right? Uh, more like, I wouldn't say southern. I'd say east. Okay. okay. Maybe almost bordering on northeast. Like, oh, okay. I, yeah. For, Forest City. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, no, no, that place. Yeah, uh, so at one point, uh, so he would also like talk about his time in Vietnam. He would basically brag about how they slaughtered a whole village of Cambodians. Why would you brag about that? Because war is a bad time. That's not a good thing to don't. No, it isn't. It's not. It shouldn't. I don't know if it's ever going to be a point of pride to say I've killed these people. Like, yeah, that's it's not taking a human life. It has, whether you think you're on the good side or the bad side, anything, if you are on the good side and they are on the bad side, definitively, there's still a, a, gravi- a gravity Especially when to you, that. Especially when you describe it as a village, that means like that's men, what, women, and children. Yeah. That, Old people, young people. To use a dumb example, that's like Luke Sky or not Luke, Anakin Skywalker yes. killing all the Tusken Raiders. Yep. And he killed the men, women, the children. Everybody. And Padme was like, that's fine. Yeah. No, We're, it's We not. can still be together. No. <laughs> like, no, Padme, Padme what no, are you doing? no. Red flag, red flag. All the red flags. Um, so anyway, uh, August 8th, 1972, uh, this here Wayne Eugene Dumont gets into some trouble through the use of murder. Well, that'll do it. Tell yeah. him he did it before. Um, so he does a murder <laughs> in Lawton, Oklahoma. Okay. Which I think has, I meant to look uh, up, but I think Lawton has come up before on the show. Maybe with uh, Ruiz and Denton is my first thought. Lawton? Yeah, L A W T O N. Hmm. I th- it's towards like uh, the southwest of Oklahoma, sort of nearish Texas. Doesn't look like a biggish, doesn't look like a very big town. No, I just, I, I just had the thought suddenly that. I think it may have come up in a previous episode, like somebody passed through there or something. It's like the southwest-ish of Oklahoma. Yeah. So, in Lawton, Oklahoma, him and two other accomplices, they use a 17-year-old girl to l- try and entice a man to a secluded area. And when that man gets there, Dumont and his two other accomplices beat the man to death with a hammer. Oh, my God. However, Dumont would not be charged with uh, this here murder. Why? Because he uh, t- agreed to testify against the other two accomplices gotcha. and got away with it, basically. That's such a slippery slope. It sure is. He even admitted to uh, participating in the murder in court, you know, oh. in, a, in a, you know, as he would have to do to testify. <laughs> Sorry, I'm speaking away from the microphone. My allergies just attacked me. Sorry about that. Yeah, Caitlin can't handle uh, spring. I, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> Not like me, because I am a superior person. You you sure are. I don't even need glasses like Caitlin does. And I need Claritin. My eyes work normally. Well, I'm happy for you. It won't last forever, so enjoy it. Yeah, well, you know. Maybe I'll... I'll, I'll we'll see. 
Live fast, die young. That's what I always say. That's what I'm known for saying. No glasses, baby. Yeah. Um, so, October 19th, 1973, he's in Tacoma, Washington, for some reason. It's a long way away. It is. And he is charged with molesting a teenage girl in the parking lot of a shopping center there. This is a bad dude. You better believe it. And he is sentenced to a five-year deferred sentence and mandatory drug counseling during... Def- five-year deferred... So, that means if he gets... If basically on probation, if something happens, he goes yeah. to jail for five years. We yeah. talked about this before, didn't we? Yeah. I don't know if that was the same situation verbiage that right. was used, but yeah, similar thing. Wow. Okay. So he gets to be free, basically. Yes. And in 1976, he's charged with raping a woman in DeWitt, Arkansas. I mean, you, you'd think that, I mean, come on. Okay. Yep. Uh, but those charges are dropped under the condition that he undergoes counseling. No. It is 1976. It's probably hard to prove rapes back then because yeah. you don't, you're not going to have the DNA evidence the same way. Yeah. And it's probably a, he said, she said type of deal. And so it's like, he did that. And he, he can just say, no, I didn't. Yeah. Prove I did. Yeah. That kind of deal. So September 11th, 1984, we are in Forest City, Arkansas. Forrest is spelled with two R's because it's named after the Ku Klux Klan guy. Fun fact. Um, like Forrest Gump, who was also named after the Ku Klux yeah, Klan guy. Yeah, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Um, they used to have a statue of him in like Memphis or something, which is pretty messed up. <laughs> it was definitely for heritage and not hey, Don't even worry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like when Georgia was like, we're going to change our flag to have the Confederate flag in it in the 1950s. wonder what's going on then probably oh. just a coincidence bunch of racist stuff yeah so on this day in four city a 17 year old girl named ashley stevens is home alone doing homework and just waiting for some friends to come by and hang out or whatever she's a she's a cheerleader up there in four city mm-hmm. and a bearded man breaks into her home holding a pistol and a knife and he forces her into his car and drives her off to a secluded area oh no Oh, no. And when they get there, the man cuts off her bra and rapes her, Aww. threatening to kill her the whole time because, you know, pistol and knife. And she's begging for her life the whole time. Mm-hmm. But she is let go. And she says that she she's able to describe him in great detail to the police. Yeah. They... Actually, using this description, provide her with like a lineup, like, hey, here's a bunch of pictures of people. And she said none of those were the guy. About six weeks later, she sees Wayne Eugene Dumont driving around town in his truck. And she's like, that's the guy. Did she tell the police? She tells the police. And they get him? They go and get him. On November 1st, he is arrested for kidnapping and raping. Wow. Wow. But he would get out on a seventy-five thousand no. dollar bond, he awaiting trial. He got out on that. Yeah. Wow. You think you'd you'd look at his money. record and yeah. all that and be like, For real? Maybe we don't right. let him run around, right? Because clearly he, you know, didn't do well with his deferred sentence and everything, right? And maybe he's gonna wish they would have kept him in prison, and everybody else will too. Yeah. Well, this is this is where the story gets weird okay march 7th 1985 he's waiting on the trial he's out on bond yeah his sons because he has he's on his second wife he ends up having six children all together yeah too many children it's a lot um so his two sons come home they find him lying in a puddle of blood on the kitchen floor what the cause of all that blood can you guess not him. Because you haven't seen... You don't know this one. I can't believe you didn't look into this one. This I is didn't. very fun. I, I, try, I don't ever look into yours. Okay. A pig. <laughs> a pig. The cause of all the blood? His testicles had been removed. What? They He'd been castrated. By whom? Well. What? Uh, so, he would survive this. Uh, well. And he claims that two men broke into his house wearing masks, and then they hogtied him, sexually assaulted him, and then castrated him with fishing wire and a razor blade. Ah! Ah! Oh, my 
my gosh. Yeah. It's not funny. That's terrible. But it's, also, you kind of deserve it. It's so weird. That. But. Did he make this story up? Is this story legit? Yeah, it's <gasps> a good question. Why would he do that to himself? Because there's no evidence of a struggle in the house. And he claimed he had been tied up, you know, hogtied and all that. How there's did he get no, There's no ligature marks on his body. Did he castrate himself? So it's possible, it's very possible, that it was a case of self-mutilation. On purpose? Yes. This is apparently not entirely uncommon, like, amongst rapists when they're on trial and stuff either as a, a ploy to gain sympathy or as like a misguided attempt to like i'm gonna remove the problem and then snippy snippy oh my gosh and nobody is ever caught or charged for this attack uh-huh. um because it sounds like he probably did it himself but and also i guess i i do question how hard the uh the the county yeah uh tried yeah. if there's like Oh, that's weird. We'll definitely look into it, wink, wink. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah. And here's why I think uh, maybe they didn't give it their all here. Uh, because the the county sheriff, Coolidge Conley, he picked up them testicles, put them in a matchbox, took them off, and put them in a jar of for, formaldehyde to preserve them. Wait, his, preserve ball, the his, testicles. his balls were still at the scene? Yes. And the police just like picked him up and was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these." He's with gonna me. he he kept them and put them in a jar, and put them on his desk. Why? Because he's <laughs> That's so weird. Isn't it gross and weird? And and the and the guy didn't have a Eugene. Wait, he didn't have a problem with this. Oh, he had a problem with it. Uh, he eventually sued them and won one hundred ten thousand dollars from the county, Ooh. which probably deservedly so. And yeah. also that that sheriff. Uh, you can't do that. I've read some other stuff about him. He's not very good. Tell me. Uh, basically, he got in trouble for like racketeering and all kinds of other crimes and went to jail eventually. Nice. Wait, what's this guy's name? Uh, Coolidge. Coolidge Conley. Okay, no. Because the, the guy I talked about last week, he was, same thing. He was like running a drug operation out of the police office or something. Yeah, like he would play craps with uh, other officers and stuff. All, all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. Gosh. But it, none of it as crazy as taking a man's testicles, putting them in a jar and sticking that on your desk. That is so peculiar. And it was from like a crime scene, like t- uh, technically. Yeah. He just like took some evidence and just like, I'm going to keep these balls they mine. <laughs> Sweet. I'm going to keep these. I've it's always like, wanted um, a jar of testicles on my desk. Did you ever watch the uh, Grindhouse? It was a movie. It was a double feature movie with, uh, it was made by Alex Rodriguez, or not Alex Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez and um, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. No. Okay, so it's a double feature. Does it have the girl with the leg? Yes. I know what you're it's, about. Um, well, I can't think of the actress's Rose. name. Yeah, Rose McGowan. Yeah. And she gets her leg bitten off by a zombie. They what? replace it with a table leg for yeah. a while. And, and then, then later it's replaced gun. with a gun. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. So that's from that movie. It's called Planet Terror. There's a character who is like, because like, these movies are based on like old exploitation films. What is that? Uh, basically like old movies from like the 70s that were like gross and Ew. controversial i guess well i can see that there was a guy i think it was saeed from lost he um cut off people's ba- balls and put kept them in a jar oh saeed as a character that was his character no saeed <laughs> yeah you strayed so far that, mo- that movie was really good though um, it, well mm, okay. yeah okay. so it reminds me of that except that's a ridiculous thing yeah and this is more ridiculous to me because it's not a zombie ap- apocalypse movie <laughs> I'm, I'm um, back checking to see if Saeed was that guy. I think it was. Um, Planet Terror is what it's called. Planet Terror, okay. Um, Conley <laughs> would later flush the testicles down the toilet. To just be like, I didn't have them. Uh, he did it publicly, like, ha ha. He didn't give them back to the person they belonged to? <laughs> no. It seems so I don't know strange. if he could do anything. I mean, would you want them back if they've been in a jar of formaldehyde? Well, they're my, they... They my balls. I do with them what I want. I, I guess... Except, you know, he did things he wasn't supposed to do with them. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. it, the the trial occurs in August of 85. And Dumont is going to be convicted of both the <sighs> kidnapping and rape charges. And sentenced to life plus 20 years in prison. Good. Good. Uh, have you made any headway? Yes. It appears that he was in Planet Terror. Yes. Yeah, it was him. I, I That... Yeah, I should watch that again someday. 
I have to look up what his character look his character looks like. That also that grindhouse thing. It also had um, between movies a bunch of like fake trailers for stuff, and one of them actually got made into a real movie called Machete. Oh, really? Yeah, the Danny Trejo movie. Yeah, I think there's two of them. It was called Machete, and it was based on that fake trailer they made. See, Naveen Andrews just looks like just such a wholesome, nice person. So I just can't imagine him as like a grungy, like as bad guy a, yeah, who cuts off people's balls. Yeah, it, but there, there he is. There's a picture from the movie, and he just the only thing different about him is that he still has his long hair. He just has a like a headband around his head, like a yeah, like a bandana. At the very end of the movie, like the oh the, the final stinger is Rose McGowan uh, reveals that she now has a Gatling gun for her leg. What is that? A Gatling gun? Like a mini gun. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, thing that, the gun that spins. Yeah. yeah. Is is this a jar of... Yep. That's okay. a, that's the jar of uh, testicles from the movie. Okay. Well, that's a weird movie. Glad I didn't see that one. <laughs> uh, it was, it was, nobody saw it except for like me and two of my friends, basically. It's <laughs> like nobody went to see that. Nope. The theater was very empty. I'm sure it was. But it was great. Uh, so... Uh, continuing on here Sorry, with uh, Dumont. So he's in prison mm-hmm. for life plus 20, okay. which I always like to imagine when they're, they're like, you're going to serve 20 life sentences or something like that. I like to imagine they just like leave a skeleton in the, in the cell for 20 years or something. Just keep going. Yeah. I think that that's, I don't know. See, you served all your time. You're out now. Yeah. We're going to, after. Sweep you up. We did life and then 20 years later. All right. We're going to scoop your skeleton into a box and throw, throw it you in away. the ground or whatever. Yeah. Throw you away. So this is where there's more controversy. Really? Things are going to get real weird. Are they they weren't already? Oh, it's going to get weirder. So um, are you familiar with Bill and Hillary Clinton? I've heard of them before. So Billary, you, as I like to call them. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you... You've lived in Arkansas long enough to know that according to some people, the Clintons are responsible for every bad thing to ever happen in the world, both real and imagined. 100%, yes. Anything bad happens, it was definitely... It was the Clintons. It was somehow the Clintons did it. Yes. In some form or fashion. Yes, 100%. Um, it goes back away. This goes back to before we were born, you know. Yeah. Uh, so... Ashley Stevens is a distant cousin of Bill Clinton. Oh, really? And her father was a big-time Clinton donor. Oh, okay. So, of course, it must be a conspiracy that that's how they got Dumont. They framed him. Uh. This is what they're going to start pushing. Um, so, you have uh, people like, uh, there's a guy named J. Cole who is a conservative radio host, and he would push that Dumont, not only was he railroaded in this uh, this here investigation, but he was also just flat out innocent based on whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and he thought it was some sort of nefarious Clinton shadow gambit that they were going to frame this guy for some reason, which to me it's, it's dumb because like, why would you want to frame somebody who's innocent for the rape? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you go after the rapist? A guilty person. Yeah. Like, what does that accomplish for you? Yeah. Like, Aha, we got him. I feel better? Yeah. Why would you? No, it, it doesn't make sense. But right. Conspiracies don't require sense. Correct. Um, another anti-Clinton critic was a man named Steve Dunleavy. He was a columnist. I always see him described as a tabloid com- columnist on what, the internet. Where, where, where did he work for? Uh, I think he did all kinds of places, but... I'm going to mostly pull from an article he wrote on the New York Post, oh. which is fortunately still on their website. Nice. So you can go look at this really wretched article. Oh, boy. He comes off as a real dick. <laughs> what did he say? So first of all, when t- so he has this whole article. And it's like, where's the pardon for Dumont? This is one of the can't believe Clinton did this, blah, blah, blah. And so he's a real wackadoodle. Yes. The one of the most galling things to read in it is when talking about Ashley Stevens, he refers to her as the so-called victim. <gasps> Dude, this girl was like kidnapped and raped. Yeah, exactly. Se- and she was a child. Exactly. 
And he always, the rest of the article, he'll always use quotes around the word victim what a when referring to her. Bag. Right? Um, Dunleavy also claims that Dumont was railroaded in this because, you know, he's, there's no way, why would he have done this? He is a Vietnam veteran of this country. He fought for our country and he didn't have a record, which is very false. He very yeah. clearly had much of a record. Very much so. So much a record. Yeah. He admitted to doing a murder. That's how much of a record he had. That's a bit, even if that's the only one, that's that's enough. <laughs> right? Uh, he also claims that uh, Ashley Stevens had ID'd two other men before landing on Dumont. Which was not correct. That is incorrect. She never identified anybody else at any other time. Um, and then he says that the men who attacked Dumont were, he says they were prisoners who had been let out to go do, go attack him where's the evidence show me the proof that's a great that's a great uh question i don't know in fact one of the bullet points i put under this is the evidence and then <laughs> how funny and then another bullet point just uh ellipses just dot 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 yeah i don't know where it was so i kept trying to find where he got this from yeah and i found a fox news segment uh-huh. where a guest take it with a grain of salt <laughs> and it wasn't even like one of the anchors it was a guest oh, okay. who claimed that dumont was castrated while in prison which is on, which is we know incorrect. Right, he was out, and that the testicles were displayed by the warden of the prison. Not correct. Right. It was the sheriff, right. of the county. And so looking at, I was like, maybe he got it from that, and it just like bubbled up in his brain somehow. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that segment aired six years after that column, so I still don't know where he got this from. And maybe he just made it up. Maybe he made it up. Maybe he talked to that radio host and he made it up. Or I don't know where they got this from. Yeah. It's, as I always say with conspiracy people, facts exist to persecute them. That's 100% true. Yeah. Yes. I wish I knew where I heard that first because I, I did not make that up. All credit to whoever that was. Sounds like something your wise father would say. I don't think, no, I would have read, I read it somewhere in an article. I <laughs> no, just don't, no, no, not him. Not him. He's he, terrible. He agrees though. We've talked about stuff like this before. Yeah. Um, he also claims there was irrefutable DNA evidence that it was not Dumont. In the actual trial, there was no DNA evidence because what they had was contaminated with the DNA of both people there, right. Dumont and Stevens. Right. Um, so, no. Hmm. They, they used blood type to help narrow things down a bit. Right. But, yeah. you know, it's I forget what and his plus blood type early was. plus on, yeah. Yeah. Yep, and blood typing is very, I mean... So I mean, it's very inaccurate because. Yeah, I, one of the articles I read was like I forget what his type was, but it was it said something like twenty eight percent of people have this blood type, which that's is probably qu- like still quite a lot. A or so, I'm, I'm a positive, and uh, it's like most people are a positive. The good blood type to have around you for zombie apocalypse, you want the friend that's with you to be an O negative. So when you need a little blood, is that the universal donor? Everybody, everybody can get O negative. It'd suck though if everybody. What if you? If were, you're O negative and you need blood, all, all you can get yeah. is O negative. That's it. That's all you can get. Well, here's a nightmare scenario. What if you're? They capture you and they're like, "We're just gonna keep siphoning blood off of you because we need it forever." Well, there's an idea for a movie or something. Make sure they're O negative, so it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, maybe not a movie, like a short story. So, uh, you heard the idea here. Two sentence horror stories: a zombie apocalypse and everybody needs blood. I'm O negative. I'm a universal donor. <laughs> dun, dun, Boom. Dun. Two sentence horror story. I did it. There's an episode for your next season TV show. Trademark. <laughs> yeah. Somebody give me credit. Yeah. I'm going to go write that on Reddit. See how it goes. Because that's where they get those from. <laughs> um, so back to back to this. Cap time. Yes. We've got a uh, 1992. Uh, Still that, DNA 92 is just in its infancy. Yeah. It's and, maybe toddlerhood. It's in a, it's toddler. And the DNA they would have had is again it's it's all kind of together so yeah. it's not going to yield now, usable results. Now you results. could probably differentiate it, but back then definitely not. Okay, so we get to 1992 here, mm-hmm. and uh, Billy Clinton is off doing presidential stuff. He's, uh, he's on it. the campaign trail. Oh, okay, he's not quite president yet. No, and uh, taking over governor duties for him at this time is uh, Lieutenant Governor Jim Guy Tucker. I don't know if you, have you ever heard of him? Maybe. So, it's a name I always I heard I've, as a kid. I think I've seen signs. It was a name I always heard as a kid, and I was like, it's a weird name. Jim Guy but I don't, Tucker. I don't follow politics enough to know what's happening and why he's in the news so much. Yeah. Uh, so, as governor, Jim Guy Tucker 
uh, actually commuted Dumont's sentence down from the life plus 20 to 39 years. Why would he do that? This guy is like shown time and time and again, he cannot be trusted. Yeah. And he... Again, harsher punishment for (laughs) violent offenders. How many times do we need to say it? I I don't know. Or at least like, you know, keep keep them away from us. Yeah. Keep them away from society. Harsher punishment. Longer punishment. Yeah. Yeah. So with this uh, this commutation, he is now eligible for parole. <gasps> no. July of 1996, Jim Guy Tucker resigns in disgrace from being governor due to the fallout of the Whitewater investigation, which is a bunch of money crimes, basically. It's boring. He, I, he it was, seems boring. I tried to like skim through some stuff. you mean Watergate. I think you were confused. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that's way more interesting. Yeah. But also a few decades too late for that. Yep. This is Whitewater, which, again, this is one of those things where, like, I remember hearing it all the time as a kid. Jim Guy Tucker, Whitewater, Clinton, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. These are just, these are this, I've heard it so much, though, it, those words are in my brain all associated together. And I'm like, I don't really know no, what this is, though. It, yeah. Um, yeah, Tucker, he ends up getting sentenced to four years probation for committing fraud and this whole wow. thing. Um, it seems, I tried looking into it. Which I, I mean, tried. I did. And uh-huh. I was like, this is very boring. It's all money, real estate stuff. That is, yeah, that's over. That's not fun to read. Yeah, we need people, we need horrible things to happen for us to be interested. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. But guess what? We have a new governor now. His name is Michael Huckabee. Oh, boy. Well, something bad happened there. You're <laughs> right. Yeah, you may remember Mike Huckabee from, uh, oh, he came up Mike Huckabee, two episodes right. ago, though. Yeah. If you're a listener. Yeah. Uh, he came up two episodes ago in Marty's Clemens. Is this is this the is this the tie, Andrew? Perhaps this is the theme that oh I'm going for. Oh my gosh! Uh, Mike Huckabee. He is old friends with. Uh, remember that conservative radio host I mentioned? Oh yeah, the real bad guy. Yeah, they were old friends. They well, met like scenes about right. Yeah, they met when they were in Texas, and he also spoke and read uh, that they're Steve Dunleavy. Nice. Yeah. Real good guy. Fun times. So he becomes governor in like July, in August. This is 1996, by the uh, way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the parole board votes 4-1 to deny parole to Dumont. Oh, good. And September 10th of that same year, the board voted unanimously to not recommend commuting his sentence or for giving him a pardon. Good, good, good. September 20th, so 10 days later, Huckabee announces his intent to commute Wayne Dumont's sentence to time served. Is this just to be a spiteful little twat? So, it's because he's buying into this weird conspiracy yes, stuff. Yes, to be a spiteful little twat. Yes. I don't. I may. Well, I don't know if how spiteful he's being, but he's definitely buying into nonsense. To conspiracy. To yes. To, Oh my! That's what that's what he's doing. He's like, well, if the Clintons are going to put him up, and and it's the call of the Clintons fault, I just release him. He's being a spiteful yes. twat. Yes, and he he's also bought into the uh, the whole idea that that Dumond is now a a Christian boy. He he's going to be very nice. Oh my god! Which never works out. It seems like so. I don't know. Like he even he he wrote a letter to Dumond, like telling him he intended to see him released from prison. This, this is this is what the letter said. Hey. Are you better? I see that you you like the Lord now. I'm gonna guess. Are you better? You think you're ready? And, he, and I was like, yes. And he's like, all right, we'll let you out. I'm gonna guess things don't go very well. Let's hear some Perhaps. more. Perhaps. And and also like there's like a church group that church groups that would visit him and stuff. Like it, it's a whole weird thing. Uh, like visit Dumont specifically. I just uh, don't get it. Right. The when. Uh, Huckabee announces that he's planning to do this. People not okay with this. They are not on board. I can imagine not so. You know, there's Vi- <laughs> harsher punishment for violent offenders. There's, you know, women are like, "Hey, don't do that." The prosecutors say, "Don't do that." Victims' rights groups tell him not to do this. Um, Mike there, Huckabee was like, "I'm gonna do it anyway." Pretty much. There are even women who were victims of Dumont who had never come forward before. <gasps> Who wrote letters to Huckabee and were like, "Do not do this. do this. He's clearly going to do this again. He's done it a bunch of other times. Yeah, this, you know, the rape of Ashley Stevens was not the first, right? And it, if he gets out, it's not going to be the last. Right. Clearly, um, 
Ashley Stevens actually even met with Huckabee and stood like right in his face and said, this is how close I w- he was to me. I will never forget his face. Oh my, that just gave me chills. Like that, that's good for her for doing that. But it's sad that she had to do that. Yep. And unfortunately, uh, Huckabee does not care. Mike Huckabee is a dumb twat. He, he's buying into all this conspiracy stuff. The narrative that he's a he's a he's a good christian boy now but he knows public opinion is against him so he decides that he can't actually go about commuting a sentence or pardoning him because that's going to be unfavorable for him politically okay. but he still wants dumont out of prison so instead he decides to pressure the parole board to release him he even holds a meeting with the parole board um and in this uh meeting basically like if you don't release him you're gonna get fired essentially because they're political appointees and he even has the secretary dismissed from this meeting so that there's no record of it (gasps) you can't do that but parole board he'd be like no that didn't happen and parole board people would be like later yeah that happened and january 16th 1997 the parole board votes four to one in favor of of probation with the requirement that Dumont leave Arkansas. Oh, so let's go kill people at, at somewhere else. Potentially. Let's hear it. Uh, and so he, he can't live in Arkansas. Uh, nobody wants him, as you can imagine. It's like, wait, go ahead. Go, and, and, but it takes like, it takes two years later. Uh, M- Missouri allows him in. <laughs> That's um, not surprising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, October 1999, he is released and moves to Smithville, Missouri, which is near Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, during his time in prison, his wife actually uh, died, his second wife. And she had actually stuck with him through the whole thing. It was like, oh, wow. yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, we all make mistakes. Usually not <laughs> that bad. massive yeah, ones like this. Yeah. Y- yeah. Usually our mistakes are like, oh, no. I forgot to turn in an assignment. I accidentally pushed that lamp over. I guess I need a new lamp where I can just sit in darkness, whatever. Or <laughs> even even you forgot to pay a bill and you have a late payment, a late fee. Yeah. yeah that's, that's about. That's pretty- usually not a big problem. Yeah. So he, he moves to that there Smithville in August of 2000. And September 14th of 2000, he gets married, gets remarried to a woman named Terry Sue, who had actually been a part of one of those church groups that would go visit him. Oh, good for her. Down in Arkansas in prison. Good for her. September 20th, so six days later, a woman named Carol Sue Shields is raped and murdered in Parkville, Missouri, which is, again, Kansas City area. Uh-huh. Her bra had been cut. I don't remember if I said that. Yes, uh, that happened yeah, with Ashley. Okay. Yeah. She had ligature marks on her wrists and ankles, but no ropes or cords are found at the scene. She died of asphyxiation, and there were tissue samples found under her fingernails, which were sent out for DNA analysis. June 20th of 2001. It's like over almost uh, a year later. Almost a year, yeah. Yeah. The DNA comes back, and who does it match but a one Wayne Eugene Dumont? Um, I just want to pause right here and take this moment of brevity and say, Mike Huckabee, her blood is on your hands. You blew it. Okay, continue. Um, fun fact. So you know how there's all these conservative articles about how Dumont got, got done, done yes, dirty? Yes, yeah. I actually found one from March of 2001. So in the time between the rape and murder happens and before the DNA comes back, there's an article or a guy's like, Dumont got screwed, blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you only knew in just a few months, you're going to look real dumb. You're going to eat those words. Yep. So June 22nd, 2001, Dumont is arrested and Wait, charged. Wait, June 22nd? Yes. Isn't that your birthday? Don't worry about that. Oh my gosh, happy birthday. <laughs> thank thank you. <laughs> I was 12. Uh, Dumont is arrested and charged with the rape and murder of Carol Sue Shields. Wow. June 21st, the day before, however, a woman named Sarah Andresk was found raped and murdered in almost identical fashion as Carol Sue Shields. Did they have DNA evidence? Uh, I'm not sure if they did. But in 2003... He is convicted of the rape and murder of Carol Sue Shields. Uh-huh. September 1st, 2005, he dies in prison from cancer. 
Good. For the vocal cords. I hope it was painful. And at the time, prosecutors were drawing up charges, getting ready to bring him on trial for the rape and murder of Sarah Andres. Did they did they do anything post? I don't know if they bothered. They were like, it's definitely him. Because he'd also, he had been working in the area. Like, that's known. Yeah. So. I'm sure it was him. Yeah. Those, and I'm. Honestly, the odds of those being his only two victims, I don't think, you know, I think the odds are greater that he probably had other victims well, in that time period. And it sounds like um, he escalated. He was like, well, I can't leave a witness because a witness got me last time. Yeah. So, and, he, and he definitely committed rapes of other people because yes. they came forward later yeah. saying like, don't like we didn't come don't, forward because. Don't let him out. No. He's yeah. going to hurt other people. And guess what he did? And guess what, Mike Huckabee? That's on you. You dumb twat. Yeah, so this led to a lot of criticism towards this Huckabee guy. Oh, really? Can you believe that? Hmm. Uh, actually became a talking point of sorts during his campaign for the Republican presidential nomination. So, Mike Huckabee, I hear you're a terrible person. What do you say to that? Uh, well, I actually have what he said for that. He said it was the parole board's fault. Oh. He was like, I, I can't control the parole board. I can't. The governor doesn't have the power to give parole. So that's the parole board, which, you know, he pressured and right. forced to do it. But then he also blamed uh, Bill Clinton and Jim Guy Tucker Shut up. because he was like, well, Tucker, he's the one who who, get, who commuted the sentence so he could get parole. He even says, uh, Clinton knew it, Tucker did it, and now they're trying to blame me for it, which kind of undermines all the conspiracy stuff, though, if Clinton was involved in commuting his sentence in the first part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, pick your side. The same thing with, yeah. Yeah. That's why conspiracy theories don't work because it's not true. They never... Ha- they never make sense either mm-hmm. like a real a real conspiracy there has to be like a goal that makes sense like and th- and it's also why i don't like conspiracy stuff these days is because it's really boring it's usually just like well then something something the government takes my guns yeah. like well that's not interesting and usually it doesn't make any sense um and all and members of the parole board as i said they said that they were pressured by huckabee to do this um, his chief counsel said that he saw them be pressured to do this. Um, and also Huckabee had publicly stated that he wanted Dumont out of prison. So clearly. So like, it seems like it's kind of his fault there. Yeah. Um, Huckabee does not get the re- Republican nomination, but he was, it was kind of a long shot anyway. Yeah. So that is the story. Don't let people out of prison who shouldn't be out of prison. Wow. And it is a great story on the dangers of really dumb conspiracy stuff and how uh, it can go bad. Of course, we already know how bad it can go. We saw people storming the Capitol and trying to kill government because of conspiracy theories that are stupid. 100%. So, I don't know. Uh, don't be dumb. Don't, don't buy into conspiracies. Dumb. It's basically like buying into a conspiracy, you might as well be buying into a cult. I mean, same same thing. I mean, it's a brainwash It's thing. becoming more like it. 100%. Yes. Like the QAnon stuff is crazy. It's just like it's just, just mind-blowing to any yeah. rational person from the outside seeing it. it's like have you lost your mind it feels like it and if you look at like QAnon stuff they've made like a billion different predictions for specific <laughs> dates and they've never come true not huh. once like, why. it's like oh on this date all the whoever's are going to be arrested and blah, and something's going to happen doesn't happen nope oh january 6th when they're uh gonna certify the electors that's not going to happen because something something well, then it did. It still happened, yeah. even despite the Capitol storming. Right. Oh, January 20th, Biden's not going to be inaugurated. He's inaugurated. Oh, well, the real inauguration's on March 4th. Nothing happens. Well, oh, I meant March 20th. It's March 22nd. Guess what? Oh, my what? gosh. It's supposed to happen on my birthday? It was supposed to happen two days ago, and it seems like Trump is still not the president. But they've changed that. They keep changing the date. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Easter because these weirdos see him as like new Jesus for some reason. That's but so strange. That's so peculiar. It's a it's a bizarre thing. I I don't know. Oh, well, good news is um, we haven't lost our minds. Thank you for that, Andrew. Yeah, I I liked it better when cults would go off onto like a weird compound and keep to themselves until they collapsed in on themselves That's instead of trying one. to ruin a whole country. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah, I like those ones. Yeah, those are good ones. Don't join them. <laughs> don't join. Don't don't follow QAnon. Don't become a Scientologist. Yeah, those are both uh, very fair points. Both actively trying to ruin things. Yeah, for everybody else. One hundred percent. Well, that was an interesting story, Andrew. Thank you for for telling us that. I didn't know that story. Yeah. Um, Except you mentioned it to me off air. 
at some yeah it, a couple weeks ago but it um yeah because i did that maurice clemens one and i was like i guess i should just i should yeah, just go ahead and do the jamon one. one yeah, yeah. Huh. i think they're right next to each other on the uh list because of their Cause similarities yeah yeah huh yeah so um i don't know do you have anything to talk about like have you been watching anything no you want to do what last we're week at? sucked so bad i really didn't watch or do much of anything i mean it was t- it was such a bad week uh but i did finally my living room came together doesn't it look nice yeah it looks good i got a new couch and i'm gonna get a new couch again another part of it <laughs> because they messed it up but that's okay um, at least they're not charging you for it yeah it's free they're replacing it um which is just is good as they should but um yeah it all came together so i've liked that i felt it feels very homey um i like that i oh i did i sh- i introduced you to my new plants um i'm gonna try my hand at doing some some planting and some flower growing uh because normally i kill things um at plants that is plants that is. <laughs> so gonna try to keep them alive um and i introduce you to each one of them um i've got california poppies which i told andrew this when i got them out of the little seed package i was like oh my god these look like poppy seeds <laughs> and john was like yep yeah, and i was like oh, weird sh-. i was like oh my god i'm so stupid <laughs> um I, i'm trying to imagine you like growing sunflowers and having that same reaction like oh, oh these, these look, look delicious like sunflower seeds <laughs> huh um, so yeah, um, planted those. I planted some wildflowers. Um, I planted some lavender and some, uh, some pink. They're like light pink dahlias. They're so pretty. Um, and then John is trying his hand at some rosemary. So was it rosemary? That's what you told me. I don't think it is rosemary. I don't think that's, it's, it's not, it's. Crap, what is it? I don't know. You told me rosemary earlier. I don't think it's so. rosemary. It's not rosemary. It's something else. It's another. Oh, gosh. It's not important. The important thing is, my pa- I told my mom, she said, oh, we tried to grow that, and it was an epic fail. And I was like, oh, no, that's not a good sign, because they grow a great garden every year. So um, that's about it, really. I'm just getting ready for for. Sp- for spring to spring it hasn't sprung yet well with your allergies it sounds like you don't like spring but but my eyes are literally just sitting here weeping and my nose won't quit itching and i take claritin every day so it's quite when i did when i went to kroger earlier we were both there at the same time which is weird it is weird um when, when i went to, the wind was like really blowing and I, and I could just see like pollen and in like like floral petals flying through the window i was like oh boy oh boy like it's so pretty but oh no but also i'm in pain <laughs> it's kind of like when i see uh, a, a fun picture of like snow in like canada or something it's like yeah. oh it's so pretty but also it's zero degrees it's so cold um yeah so you just want to go to what you're looking at let's you don't do it it sounds like you don't have much you were looking at. Yeah, I wasn't looking at too much. You no. didn't look at any of the things, your your assignments. I know. I didn't watch the four-hour Snyder Cut, and I did not watch um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. So. I did co- watch. I put on Harry Potter, though. Okay. Because I just, I needed something that I've seen before. Um, it's so like I've, a comfort food. I've been still listening to Going Clear. Um, Scientology? It's the go- Scientology book highly recommend it you like it again it's wild i'm already forgetting stuff again but like the stuff about david miscavige and how like horrible and abusive and crazy and weird he is yeah um there's a story about how so (laughs) at the end of the episode last week i said as scientologists say get blown yeah and i never explained that which is why i thought it was funny uh for somebody to be blown or to blow in scientology means they've they've left they've gotten out or they're trying to get out. Uh, so they have a whole story in there about how they would try and go get people back. Like they would send people to get them or... Um, Against get, their will? Pretty much. Or they would like... One of the strategies they would do is um, if they thought they were the person was going to get on a plane, they would call the airport Shut up. and pretend to be that person and be like, hey, I just want to call about booking a flight on whatever. And the... Uh, airline person be like oh we've already we actually already have you on that and they'd be like all right we know where who where they're going and at what time and stuff Shut up. that's how they end up getting one of them back <gasps> and you like basically kidnapped them kind of yeah 
What? I mean, and again, it's probably not like physically forcing them to, but they feel like they can't leave. Yeah, they're like... That sort of deal. We'll hurt your family if you don't come back type thing. Yeah. Yeah, or it's like, well, I don't have a choice. Yeah. Also, I get the impression that John Travolta is super gay, um, and they probably are hiding all of that in case he ever comes against Scientology, and they're going to release all of the information. One of the things I didn't mention, the e-meter stuff, which is where they confess all their sins, basically. Yeah. They are very specific about keeping records of that. Of course, it's blackmail. Yeah, so that's like Nexium, that the sex cult Nexium or whatever. Yeah, that's what whatever Rainier, I can't remember his first name, Rainier. Uh, that's what they would do in the in the slave. It was, it's, 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 there's a whole podcast on it. It's it's the same thing. That to be a part of this, it, it, like there was an exclusive group within the group, you had to give them collateral, is what they said, and it, it's blackmail. And so if you tried to leave, you try to tell anybody, they released these nude photos of you or these you know whatever it, it has to be yeah. dirty laundry like they don't want you to say well i forgot to pay a bill you know 10 years ago no 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 yeah. they need something yeah. even if you make it up they have to have it right and if you said something like forgot to pay a bill for the scientology people they'd be like yeah but what else have you done yeah because that's like part of the the whole going clear stuff like you have to clear yourself of your overts is what they're called basically your sins yeah um so you have to like confess all that, but they they'll talk about like, have you ever had homosexual thoughts or whatever? Okay, about who and when and <laughs> stuff like that. Wow. And they keep a meticulous record of all that. Same thing with like they also when you try and get out, they will try and have you be interviewed for a long time about all this stuff. And one of the things they'll do is they'll record you saying that everything was fine. Yes, yeah. and they'll get you to sign a document saying, like, I wasn't abused, whatever. Yeah. And people will sign it because there's like, I just want to get, get out. out. Yes. I don't care. Yes. And so if they ever speak out, the Scientology would be like, we have this document. Look at that. You said you, you are recorded and you signed it saying everything was fine and every, you're happy and nothing's wrong. Yeah. So, again, don't don't join Scientology or any cults, really. Yeah. Uh, you do. never, a lot of them probably just fall apart and people will scatter, but you never know if you're going to end up in Heaven's Gate drink the kool-aid jim jones situation that, i did read like, i did listen to um <clears throat> a jim jones thing the other day boy it was it is just I, it was it i had heard you know of course I've, I've seen documentaries and stuff about it before but each time it's just mind-blowing they would yes they it was so like i was tearing up li- like listening to it because they recorded his last message and he is very frantic sound. he's like, they're going to take our old people. They're going to take our young people. We have to stop them from doing this. We have to save ourselves and by killing yourself. Yeah. And, he, and they were, you could hear them mixing stuff up and it was like people, you could hear people crying. I think and, one of the worst parts of that is that is how much of that is not even just like everybody thinks of it as like a mass suicide. A lot of it was straight up murder. Murder. They yeah. forced people to take the, the poisons. They forced. Um, th- like, there was an account of it where uh, they made all the children go first uh, because they didn't want the kids to watch other people die. So they made the kid. They forced the kids to. And there was like three or four hundred something children, and they made them all drink it first. And then people that were hesitant, they took syringes and injected them with it. Um, and th- they said there was this one girl who's a teenager. She was, she would take a sip and spit it out because it tasted terrible. And they sat there and like poured it down her throat and made her drink it. And it's just, don't look at, don't look at pictures. Don't go look at photos. It's awful. I wouldn't even listen to the audio. I've only listened to a little bit and I was like, I don't need this. It's heartbreaking. And of course the attack before that, where he sent his cronies to the airport because yes. you know there was they, a they killed a congressman yes there was a congressman that came to like be like i need to check on the welfare of these american citizens and so went on to the compound and they're like yes everything is fine and if they weren't acting happy enough they were basically like beaten or withheld food or whatever and so he said there's somebody that passed it secretly there was so many eyes on people but somebody secretly passed a note to one of the envoy the vig- visiting envoy and was like please, you know, please tell my mom, my dad, you know, like I'm here, please get me out of here. Like, because it, it, it's just, if they did not have any communication. They were secluded. They were cut off very culty tactics. So, I, I mean, it was just so heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And they had um, test runs of that coming up to that. That's something I learned. Like they would, he would just pull out the Kool-Aid and be like, this is poison. Everybody drink it. And everybody drank it. 
and it wasn't poisoned. It was just the test run and then it came to the real deal and it was poisoned. And it's just so sad, especially the kids, the kids, the kids. Yeah. That's what got me. And and all of the murder involved. 100%. Again, it's it was less mass suicide. It was a mass murder in yeah. a lot of that. Yes. Um You want to talk about something a little lighter? Yeah, let's do that. So, uh, um I watched I watched Falcon the Winter Soldier. Do you like it? I liked it. Yeah. Cool. Um I think you can wait. I, it's not going to be as heavy into the like oh, What's what does happening? this mean? Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. There's like a mystery of like who is that who is this group where they it's what's their hydra. deal it's hydra maybe um but it isn't as much of like the weird mystery right. box magic stuff, stuff. Of wandavision yeah it's quite good there's an action sequence at the very beginning with falcon that is like his movie quality is really very good looking well and it's also quite good it's him flying around fighting dudes who are wearing like those flight suits where you like glide and stuff yeah it that seems really dumb but it's awesome did Tony Stark make the Falcon outfit? No, I don't think so. That was like military stuff. Maybe he did some stuff after the fact, but Just like wondering. he had it in Winter Soldier before he knew Tony Stark was. So this is all happening post blip, right? Yes. And okay. there is like some people like dealing with the effects of that. Like Falcon and Winter Soldier both, they were in blipped. the blip. Yeah, they blipped. And Falcon or Winter, Winter Soldier also has the extra part of He's a, he was alive during World War II, yeah, uh, and then he was an assassin who was woken up every whenever, yeah. and also he remembers all of that, and that's a big deal for the show. He's probably got a lot heavy, heavy stuff in his, yeah. he needs a little therapy. He sees a therapist. Oh my gosh! That's part of it. That's amazing. Um, and he's even, like, part of it's like making amends, yeah. uh, like, even there, there's other, like, uh, ripple effects of his time as a hydra assassin oh really that is still happening and he knows about and so like part of his deal is trying to fix that yeah like there's like without going too far into it there's like a politician he helped put in power he needs to get them out and of power. even though hydra is seemingly dead that corrupt politician is still there right so there's kind of a thing like that um that yeah. and th- that reminds me of uh you talk about therapy the first time we meet um falcon what's his name uh sam something yeah yeah. first time we meet him anthony mackie yeah yeah the first time we meet him he is well you know he's running or whatever yeah like ptsd thing but then he goes yeah he's he's running a therapy session for ptsd for soldiers and i was like oh good for him and also good on him for uh somehow becoming friends with Captain America, even though their first meeting was just Captain America showing him up. Yeah. When that's they were what, doing that jogging thing. That's how he knows. He took it all in stride. He was like, yeah, you're better than me. Yeah, like, yeah. He's so like, you know he's a good, honest guy. He was like, listen, I know you juiced. I, I know you got like PEDs going on. <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it seems pretty good so far. I'm cool. interested in seeing where it goes. Cool. And it's not, it's not as weird as WandaVision, but I think it's doing a... It feels more like the MCU. spy. Well, it feels more like the spy thriller military stuff that you had in like Winter Soldier, Captain America type yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that that can be interesting. Cool. And different Revisit enough. Of that. Yeah, it'll be less uh, space lasers shooting at each other, which is cool. It's more I can have pistols and machine guns, and I can fly, and I can fly, and my buddy has a metal arm, and he, he's he's a, and he's a super soldier. Yeah, so he's a super soldier. Um, they actually don't even meet in the first episode. They're doing but their they own thing. Know, but they already know each other. Yeah, they know each other. But I mean, they're 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 not hanging out. They're not. Oh, they're not. They're doing their own together thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm interested in seeing where that goes. It seems pretty good. I need to watch it. I watched the four hour Justice League Snyder cut. Did you thing. have to break it up? Or like, or did you just like, oh, yeah. power through? I would just be like, okay, it's been an hour and a half. I'm gonna go do something else for a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna go make lunch, and then like another hour, I'm gonna go take a shower and then come back. <laughs> just something. It's too long. Um. My overall review, I'm not going to spoil too much because there are some interesting changes. Uh-huh. Do you and like do you, better than the what was broadcast? I think it is better, but it's not. It it's also four hours long, so it's not yeah. that much better, really. But he was supposed to break that up into two movies, right? Conceivably, yeah. yeah. They actually, it is it is definitely better. For one, Cyborg, uh-huh. if you remember, yeah. he's like nothing in that movie. Nothing at all. He was done dirty in that movie. In this in this version, he's an actual character. 
Wow. With like motivations and a character arc and a backstory and stuff. Which I was wanting to see. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this guy just shows up. Exactly. There's like, hey, there's a robot man. Cool. Anyway, you want to hang out? Exactly. And I, I need more. I need more. Something happened and I need more. You get more. Um, Sorry. The, uh, is, your, is your phone okay? Yeah, I'm good. You're okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a real character. Maybe watch it like so. There's it's split up into parts, like chapters. Like it'll be like part one, something, something. Part uh-huh. two, this and that. Maybe just watch it like a TV show where you're like, all right, part two, or you get to like part three, and you're like, I'm a little burned out. I'll come back later. Pause yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe do that. Maybe that's a better viewing experience. Not all at one time. Yeah, I still think. It, feel, it still feels rushed on some of the characters. Like Aquaman's backstory, you still don't have it from... If you're, if you're thinking of this as just Justice League, which originally came out before Aquaman, mm-hmm. it's still like, what's his deal? He's from the ocean. He doesn't want to be king. That's it. That's all you get. Cyborg, it's like a real story. Mm-hmm. Flash, it's like he can run fast and his dad's in prison. That's about all you get. He gets a Quicksilver type scene where he's like, I'm moving real fast, like from uh, X-Men Apocalypse and Days of Future Past, uh-huh. which I think sucked. I thought that's, I thought Flash's version sucked. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. The Flash's one, the one they do, I think is terrible. He also still runs funny. Like he look, it, it doesn't look right when he runs he's kinda fast. Duck, he's kind of duck footed. Yeah. Or like it's, or like he's not running at all. It looks very bad, I think still. Hmm. Also, his character is still annoying. But not as annoying. I like him. As Ezra Miller? Yeah, he was annoying in that first version. He was in Harry Potter, no, Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. A worse movie. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm willing to say those Fantastic Beasts movies, worse than the Snyder Cut. Oh. That is some... Uh, That's a definitive way out there. That is me giving... Making a statement. I am just stomping on those Fantastic Beasts movies with that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Because I, I didn't like them at all. And I... This is okay. This... Fa- fa- this Snyder thing was okay. The villain, Steppenwolf. He is an actual villain with character now. Oh. He has motivations. In the first one in the first version, he's just like, I'm here, I'm gonna I'm gonna take over. Yeah. In this, he he has a motivation beyond I'm here and taking over. It's like I'm taking over because Why? Because he is in debt to Darkseid. And Darkseid is like a Thanos type. Oh, okay. He, he to be fair, he was created before Thanos in the comics. Don't worry about it. Okay. But, um, and Darkseid is in this. And if you really love this movie, um, I'm sorry. They're probably not going to make any more of these. There's a lot of sequel bait stuff, like with Darkseid, because Darkseid mostly is in the background. Oh, okay. But yeah, Steppenwolf is an actual character. Uh, my favorite part is, um, you saw Aquaman, right? E, unfortunately, yes. Yes. And you remember how Amber Heard talked in that and how they had negative what was chemistry? Her accent and it was awkward. She has a weird accent in this movie Again? that she did not have in Aquaman. It's a different accent and it's very off putting. This one came out before Aquaman, right? Yes. So my theory is that I, I believe the footage of her in Justice League. She wasn't in Justice in, in yes, this? Was she, she was in the original version, but only for like a 30 second thing. Oh, okay. And she did not have this weird accent. So I think it's a Joss Whedon reshot, reshoot is what that was. And gotcha. the original version, she had this weird accent. And they're like, don't do that. But it also doesn't make sense because Justice League takes place before Aquaman. And Amber Heard and Aquaman are all like, we have all this history together in Justice League. But in Aquaman, it's like, he's like, who, who are you? Huh. Okay. That's very strange. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, it's, all, it's also more violent. Like the scene where Wonder Woman saves all the people in that museum from the first Justice League. Uh, vaguely remember it. Uh, there's, there's a part where instead of just like subduing the criminals, the terrorists, she like murders the hell out of them. Like she punches one of them or two of them even, and they hit their head on a wall, and you see like a smear of blood. So it's like, yeah, she just punched their brains out, or just which gave is, them a horrible concussion and brain bleed it's fine she murdered those guys who cares okay um they were terrorists who were gonna blow up a bunch of kids and Mm, there's a part where like this guy is like reloading a gun and he's taking forever to do it and you just watched her run at super speed blocking a bunch of bullets and instead of just running up and punching his brains out which she can do she's shown she can do that she's shown she will do that she did to those other guys 
Instead, she does this thing where she like bangs her little bracelets together mm-hmm. and basically explodes him. What? She just blows that guy up and also blows out a huge side of that building for no reason. She, she could she hit her bracelets too hard. <laughs> she could have run up and like bow, bow. again just punch that guy. And yeah. She's like, no, nah, I'm gonna explode him because that's cool. I guess I don't know. <laughs> a lot more violence. <clears throat> Yeah, they also cuss a bunch. Who cares? Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it's R-rated. This is the it's Zack Snyder. Snyder God. Yeah. Martian heard- Manhunter is in the movie. I don't know who that is. He's a green guy from Mars, sort of, who can fly, has super strength, and can uh, shapeshift. So it turns out, uh, do you remember in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, there's like this uh, military guy who's like, I'm a general or whatever. No. Okay. Well, secretly, he was Ma- Martian Manhunter the whole time. Oh. Uh, he's in it. It's pointless sequel bait stuff. That's never going to be made. Jared Leto's Joker is the worst still. Is he in it? Yes, he sucks. I do. Remember, it's, we, it's we not talk- Leto. It's Leto. I don't know. Okay. Who cares? Okay. Leto. 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 I, I don't care what his it name is. It doesn't matter. He's the worst. He sucks. It's so bad. I, we actually talked about him being in it. At some point in how he says, we live in a society in the trailer. Yeah. Um, first of all, he never says, we live in a society in the movie. What does he say? He says a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to tell you some of it. Okay. Um, but, also, but first of all, hashtag release the we live in a society cut. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's my campaign. <laughs> okay. Um, he, he has like a line about giving Batman a reach around. And it's like, what? what? Like, what are you doing? Apparently that line was improvised by Leto himself. Oh, and it's just like such a perfect like ah yes. This this reminds me of why I hated him and why he sucked <laughs> so much because it reminds me of the time he uh sent used condoms right. to his castmates. And it's like I that's not a joker thing. That's just that's a creepy gross. sex cre- that's a creepy sex pest thing. Like that's, what's what's your thi- what's your deal, man? And that's why he is now the leader of a sex cult. It's it's so I don't understand what his deal is. And there's actually, a scene. And, and what I just said was actually true. Yeah. Okay. Batman has like a speech to Joker where he's like, I'm going to effing kill you. He says effing. It's, or the, he says the F word. Okay. It's like, I'm going to effing kill you slow and stuff. And it's like supposed to be really cool and badass, but it's kind of just embarrassing Cringy. to me. Yeah. That whole scene ben is Aff- bad. Ben Affleck Batman, right? Yeah. Which I, I think he could have done well. I think I think with better people directing and writing ben affleck could have been a good batman henry cavill could have been a good superman i love henry cavill but they had bad people yes. directing and writing yes. and that's why the yeah. superman movies by themselves weren't bad i didn't think at least that first one man of steel was sort of okay I like there's man some stuff about it where it's like you lost like the action scene at the end goes on for a thousand years and it's like get on with it yeah and there's some other stuff where it's like that doesn't seem the tornado scene is dumb um yeah we talked about that there yeah there's there's nothing as bad as the tornado scene or martha uh so Zack snyder could not in fact top himself the closest he got was joker with the uh reach around comet it wasn't (laughs) even his fault that was jared leto's fault he left it in it is his fault yeah that's true like what are you doing jared stick to the script bud except in this case Zack snyder's like oh that's good that's good stuff keep it coming no that's what he did Zack uh, Snyder, or, you you made this monster. You at least enabled him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, the movie shot in a, like a weird film. A weird uh, filter. Filter. Not filter. Oh, what's the ratio? The ratio is weird. So it's like instead of being widescreen, it's like a full screen. So you have bars on either side on your TV. Weird. He says it's the uh, same resolution they have at IMAX. And he's like, I want it to be like at the IMAX. It's like. That's great, Zach. This movie's not going to be in an IMAX. This, this doesn't is help be anybody. On my TV. This is never going to be in an IMAX. So, like, what are you doing? Um, but overall, I'd say it's it's definitely better. If you are one of those people who absolutely loved Batman v Superman, you're just like, I love this movie and Zack Snyder's vision. It's the greatest. If you're one of those people, you will love this. Which you know, basically, if you like crap, then you'll like this. <laughs> Yeah, got him. Got him. Now this is this is actually pretty good for the most part. Yeah. But again, they they did the the DC thing. They did it backwards where they Marvel they had like five movies and then Avengers. With this, they had three, 
and like you have three major characters introduced, including a fourth in Martian Manhunter, who is like sequel bait, but like sort of in it. Yeah. You're introducing so many characters, even in a four hour thing, you're like, it's going to be hard to really do anything effective there. So I wonder what this means for the, for the future of DC. Like I liked the Wonder Woman, Wonder, Wonder Woman movies. Aquaman was, it was bad. Not very well done. The acting, it was just, they did the best with what they had, I think. I doubt that. There's stuff about it. There's stuff and about Amber Aquaman I Heard, like. It was just. But that is not it. Yeah. That was, that. yeah, that was negative chemistry. It was like, these people clearly do not like each other. Or Yeah, there was like, I don't know, maybe maybe it's like the uh, the thing from Friends where, where Joey claims that uh, if actors have real life chemistry, they don't have, uh, they can't have good chemistry on screen. So maybe they had super chemistry off screen, but hmm. I don't know. They, I don't know. I think John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, they made that that scary movie together. Uh, not scary. Uh, it was... Quiet Place? Yeah, it was really well done. And they did. That was awesome. They did a great job. I liked that movie a lot. And they have they have chemistry. Yeah. All, all, in all the places. Yeah, it's... But for real, that... that uh, that Aquaman movie, they they had negative chemistry. It's pretty brutal. It's awesome. And also, D- DC was talking about when they were originally releasing this slate of movies, it mm-hmm. was like, okay, Man of Steel. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we should turn this into a cinematic universe because Marvel's making a zillion dollars and we're just sitting here with our thumbs up our butts. Gotcha. And then they did Batman v Superman and then Wonder Woman. And then they were going to do Justice League Part 1, Justice League Part 2. And then they were going to have like... Uh, Aquaman solo movie, which they did, a Flash solo movie, which has been in development hell forever, yeah. a Batman solo, which now they have a different Batman, so it's not even connected anymore. Is this in the same? Is Rob Pattinson in? Is he taking mm. Ben Affleck's spot? No, it's, it's just going to totally be a different, different. It's like it's a yet another reboot. It's like the Spider Man curse, kind of. And then they were going to do another uh, Superman with like Superman solo film. Uh-huh. It doesn't seem like they're going to do that. They were going to do a Cyborg solo film. That still hasn't materialized. This stuff was supposed to come out before 2020, and none of it's happened. So, yeah, they and they keep being like, "We're going to do a Flash movie. We fired the director. We're starting over again. Oh, we're starting over again." It's constant with the Flash thing. Just cursed. Just totally cursed. Feels like it. I don't know what they're doing. Hmm. Interesting. But uh, well, I need to watch it, and I need to watch Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, maybe maybe treat the Justice League thing as a TV show. That's a good idea. That might be the best way to do it. Just watch a little bit, take a break, come back to yeah. the next day. Just be like, hey, okay, we, we hit part, we've watched the first three parts, let's take a break. I think there's like eight or nine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I don't know if they're probably not all the same length, so it's not a perfect way to do it. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's about all I got. That's a lot. That was, that was a good overview. Good synopsis. Um, That's all I got, I think. Take us home. Okay. Guys, thank you for sticking with us. Thanks for listening to us. We appreciate you. We appreciate your support and everything you do for us. This has been Paint the Town Dead. I'm Caitlin. That's Andrew. Uh, You can catch us on Facebook at Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Instagram at Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us um, on Twitter at PTTDpod. And you can email us at PTTDpod at gmail.com. Please subscribe on anything you can, rate five stars on anything you can, like anything you can, share anything you can. Any and all interaction you have with us helps us out, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, We drop episodes every Tuesday, unless uh, I'm sick, unless I get called in, unless I miss a plane, unless... Unless I do something. Unless it's me. It's all me. It's always Caitlin. 100%. Um, So, look for us this Tuesday. Look for us next Tuesday and all the following Tuesdays until they're, until not. That's right. We're the Tuesday twosome. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. Also, Paint the Town Dead. That's what we are. So, guys, thanks again. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Get blown.